Hello everyone and welcome back to round two of the Maine State Championships. Here we're just north of Portland. I'm Tristan Tanner, I'm joined in the box by Thomas Gilbert. How are you doing today, Thomas? I'm doing great. Excited to watch us play here on the Bittersweet Ridge. Uh, more wooded course than uh, the Patriot that we played the other day, so it's going to be some tight lines and some fun. Yeah, and this is presented by Century 21 and Thought Space Athletics, so thank you to them. We've got an awesome card today. We actually have you on the card, Thomas Gilbert. We also have Joshua Seeley. You guys are both tied for the lead right now, and then we have Garrett Gerthy and Jason Dorr, both one back of you. Uh, this was, uh, we're switching now to uh, the BSR course, Bittersweet Ridge, which is a little bit more wooded, a little bit tighter gaps, and plays just a little bit different than the Pineland course. Mm -hmm, for sure. Here we are on hole one, uh, 322 foot par three. Uh, you have two gaps. You have one that the drone's gonna fly down on the right side. Then you also have a forehand line out to the left. Both plays are really good. The right side gap has a little bit more of a straighter line to the basket and a little more visible. And then the other one, you just gotta miss one or two trees. You get a nice skip up there. Yeah, it's really something that you can choose just what you're feeling comfortable with first Lewis on the box and Maine, here. Josh Seeley. Yeah. Here we got Joshua Seeley starting us up. To have some sort of mid is going to throw down this right side gap. A little bit of a late release there. Look to fight pretty far up the fairway. He might have a long look, possibly. Next at the tee, from Toronto, Ontario, Thomas Gilbert. A little bit of Gilbert. last minute stretching before my throw. I have my Mako 3. Quite get the flip up you wanted, it looked like, but sneaks through and you're parked right there. 15 feet away, probably. Gainesville, Florida. Yeah, fortunate to get that break on the first hole. <laughs> I was definitely happy. This is Garrett's Glow Rock 3 that he loves so much. Beat up now, so it's pretty straight. Oh, and that's just a perfect shot. Yeah, he throws that disc so well using it quite a bit throughout this round. East Waterboro, Maine, Jason Dorn. Jason going for that forehand line. Looks to have pushed it a little bit late, but he's up there inside circle one, putting. That's all you need on this first hole. We got Josh from about 50 feet or so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a ridiculous putt to start the round. Wow. With you right there by the basket, that's a that's a great one to hit. Mm -hmm. Keep that share of the lead. Super impressive. Another nice birdie there. Starting two for two on this card. And you've got a little bit of a putt here, but... Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a star frame on hole one. Start yeah. out the day. That's the way you want to do it. Yeah, definitely the one. The way you want to do it, especially because it's just kind of a, a tricky hole mm -hmm. to get yourself going. And speaking of tricky holes, hole number two. It's only 200 feet. It's just another one of these weird holes. There's this gap that the drone is flying right now that a lot of players choose to take with uh, either a forehand turnover. Some players take a little more left gap with a backhand. But a lot of people were choosing just to throw a huge spike hyzer out over the trees and just crash down on the basket. You see Josh choosing that spike hyzer line. Needs to get down. That's great. You see those logs there? Those actually do stop a lot of shots. I was watching a few cards play through this earlier and saw quite a few of them hitting those logs. 
which is nice because it keeps you nice and close to the basket. What disc is this for you? This is my Star Thunderbird. I'm going super high, trying to go over those pine needles there. Oh, oh wow. Okay, I was wondering what happened to that shot. But luckily, it hits the tree on the back roll and still keeps me inside circle. Yeah, very interesting ground reaction there. Garrett going with a slower disc, it looks like. Yeah, he's throwing his Sonic here, just wow. trying to float it up there and swing it into the left, using that understable disc to get the full pan. I like that, that line, because the hardest part about that hyzer line is getting the right-to-left movement. Mm-hmm. Jason going with that little lower hyzer line as well. Yeah. So he just didn't quite get it up as much as he wanted, but a good right to left action, and this is the putt he'll be left with. Just maybe a little bit of nerves to start the round, but that's okay. He'll clean that up. And this is a little bit of a pressure putt to keep on pace. Great there. Ready from Garrett. This hole did come in at a .34 average under par, making it the third easiest hole on the course today. So it's really one that you want to get to start out your round. Yeah, definitely. Josh was able to do that. Got three birdies and a par for the card. We are on hole three. This is a tricky par three that is 343 feet. Kind of start out in the open and then you go into this kind of wooded fairway you kind of have to just choose a gap or kind of hope to get lucky. Uh, a roller is also a play on this hole, forehand flex. So it's really whatever you feel most confident with hitting these initial gaps and then just hope it filters up here near the basket. And like you said, all you're trying to do is just get really a putt inside of like 50 feet on this hole. You're pretty happy with because it is a really tricky one to get inside circle one. Josh going with like a neutral fairway, I believe, and just couldn't quite turn it in front of that tree. Here I am. I got my star sidewinder, so I am opting for the roller. Good line, just needs to miss those trees. Oh, that's a really good shot. Yeah. I just like that because it keeps it skinny through all those trees and also won't kick too far if it does hit a tree. Yep. Here, also going with that play. That's a lot of cut. Trying to go down the left side. Needs to get going right, though. It has a late turn towards the basket, but it, yeah, just going to be stuck up on that left side about 45 feet away. This has some late lip. Catches that tree. Gonna be edge of circle two out there. Here we go. We got Joshua with, leave an A2. Trying to give it a nice flick. Release it a little bit high, but filters right there to circle's edge. Yeah, might have a little tricky putt there. Jason here from the edge of circle two for birdie. short on that run. Let's see what Garrett has here. Let's have a pretty tricky lie. Yeah, just a small window up there, kind of poking hope. But decent attempt. Yeah. Oh, just a little left side from you. Yeah, I just didn't really engage my legs very well there and just left it a little bit left side.
and that was a really impressive putt. He said he had to use all wrist because he was kind of trapped in that window, couldn't really swing his arm. That was a great par save there by Josh. And this was the third hardest hole in the day. Only 4% of the field was able to get into circle one in regulation, which is pretty crazy for a par three. Only four birdies on the day. Well. Let everyone cleans up for their pars, and we'll be moving on a hole four after this leaderboard check-in. Not much movement yet so far. We still have the same card in the lead, and Tristan making some moves. Two down for the round so far. Casey White, four down through eight. Everyone's trying to fight back on this moving day. Hole number four, 490 feet. This is kind of an interesting tweener hole. They listed it as a par three, but it really could be listed as a par four if they wanted to. Not a whole lot of players are gonna be getting the two look at it. Most players are gonna be going over this parking lot, trying to get somewhere in this area to leave yourself this kind of tricky approach, probably moving right to left into the green. There is a big Anheuser line off the tee. The wind wasn't that great for it today, so I'm not sure if any players are gonna be going for that. And that was a good shot there by Josh, hitting the gap over the parking lot. That'll leave him with a relatively short approach to the green. And here I am trying the big Anheuser. It worked out for me once in practice, so I was like, heck, send it. <laughs> and that needs to hold. Look to be a little bit low out of your hand, but yeah, you do get on that kind of left side of the fairway. Yeah, and we weren't quite sure whether that landed like near the fairway or in the rough. So we'll have to take a look when we get up there. This is Garrett Star Wraith. And that was a great shot, again, hitting the gap. He kind of wanted to try to hit that parking lot and get that flare skip up the hill. See if uh, Jason can pull that off. Get big for me. Thank you. Oh yeah, he did. That's more of the line you want. See it skipping all the way to the very top of the hill. Great shot. Yeah, beautiful shot there. Can't throw it that short. A little bit late out of his hand, but he's still going to be edge of circle somewhere there. Definitely a putt. And so this was after about two and a half minutes of looking for the disc. It was just a little bit shorter than we thought and have this kind of backdoor hyzer that I was trying to do and catch that tree is going to leave me about 40 feet to the basket. Garrett with a nice AVRX3 approach. An easy three. Mason hitting a tree on his approach as well. I leave him at a circle. And Josh said he was trying to give us a little bit of a half run, making sure to land it nice and soft so it doesn't go too far down. And I'm just trying to give us a full run, commit it at the basket. my hand. I, I thought I had that. And as you see right there, I, I waved goodbye to that disc as it is rolling quite a bit past. This doesn't look too, too far, but it was about 60 feet down the hill. You have an Annie putt now, it looks like. Yep. Oh, and gave a great bit on that one, actually. Just a little bit low. Unfortunate there to get that roll. And Jason, this is a little bit of a short one. Not gonna be happy about that. Oh, Josh, cutting in for his bogey. This card not playing this hole too, too hot. How did the rest of the field do today? This averaged 3.73, so it really could be listed as a easier par four. There were no birdies on the day because it was a par three. 
Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing. But how will we... The closing! Moving into hole number five. It's getting into the little bit trickier section, a little bit tighter wooded. This one is extremely downhill, only 200 feet, and it plays almost like 150 feet. Most players are gonna be going down this left side, trying to just check the disc into the hill and get maybe a little bit of filter towards the basket. And it should be mentioned, over this hillside, it drops off completely, and there's not a whole lot of saving par from over on that side. And Gary going with his son and just trying to float it down the hill. Has a little bit too much turn, but oh, kind of checks in that little tree you see right there, and he'll have a putt from just inside circle. Uh, let's try and throw the forehand, flexing it down that left side gap, and kicks to a similar spot about 30, 30 feet or so. Jason looks to just cut a tree there, but should be inside the circle. Looks like you're going with your Nova here. Mm -hmm. It's just straight disc going straight at the basket. Oh, and that has a chance. Oh, oh my gosh. Really How did I not hear about <laughs> this? <laughs> I was trying my best. Wow. No. So many chains. Yeah. Uh, that would have been a sweet way to back up that double bogey in the last oh, hole. Oh my gosh. Hits a lob, I think, just coming in a bit too fast. Yeah, just a little bit left side, I guess. But wow. Hard for birdie. You'll take that. No, it's just a little bit right side on his putt there. And I, I thought I'd smash that pace. Yeah, it, it looked like it right out of your hand. It was on a great line the whole way. I actually threw a very similar shot to you, but mine got a little bit of a lift at the end, <laughs> and so mine went about 175 oh, feet long no. of the basket. Wow. Save your par? Yes, I was able wow. to save my par. That's a great par save. And nice putts there by Jason and Garrett to pick up the birdies. Joshua here to clamp his par, and after the spit out, just slept out this tap in. <laughs> Analyzing what happened there a little bit. Yeah. Hole number six, we're playing back up that same hill we just played down. Most players are choosing uh, the big Annie on the left side gap, which allows you to shape the fairway and get the most distance up the hill. A lot of players were choosing forehand as well. And once you get over this hillside, it just feels like a little uh, just scramble shot almost just to give yourself a pretty short putt, hopefully. Yep. Garrett's going to be going with that rock again. He told me he was just trying to land this on top of the hill to give himself a nice, easy approach. That's well done there. 
Yeah, a little bit shorter than he might have wanted, but he is going to have a look into the green. Jason looks to have a faster disc here, trying to go big. A good line, just catching that angle a bit too hard, but he cuts rolls into the logs. That kind of can help save you sometimes down there. And I have my Star Thunderbird. I'm going for the same line as Jason. A little and bit early, a little bit turned. Yeah, very similar result. It's getting cut roll down to those logs. Yeah, and Josh just catching those pine needles, okay. kills all the speed. And he only lands about halfway up the hill. So he's going to have this tricky sidearm approach into the green. A lot of Anheuser with an overstable disc. Oh, and that's a great shot. A little bit of roll filter towards the basket. That's a. It's going to be a scramble birdie, it looks like. Yeah, very impressive. Garrett looks like he has to go with a pretty similar shot. Wow, wow, kind of an unfortunate bounce, hit right by the basket, but still inside the circle. I have to go pretty high ante with my pig, trying to get it up and around to filter down that little tunnel to the basket. Wow, that's a great shot. I was in actually the exact same spot off my tee shot as well, and that is that was not an easy shot to execute. Jason, luckily, far enough up the fairway just to give it a nice jump putt up there. He'll be right there for his birdie as well. Nice birdie there from G. Good confident putt there from you. Yes, putter was feeling good today. Jason just left about 15 feet. Nice up and over the rim. Taps in his birdie. And Josh just left with his short approach for a short upshot or whoa. Short putt after his great upshot there on the you hole. Go. And great three save from him. This whole average is just under par, so definitely one that felt good to get. Checking back in, Garrett has jumped up and took the lead from you and Joshua, but you guys are both just tied one back. Again, there's me still trying to make a move. Ezra playing pretty well through 10 holes. And Terry making a move from way down the leaderboard. Hole number seven, 440 feet. I actually took a rangefinder at this one and it averaged or it shot at 390 actually, oh, okay. which made a little bit more sense because I thought I was throwing a pretty good shot and I kept ending up long of the basket. Mm -hmm. But it's just this slight turnover late through this gap. Another one that you just really want to get a putt at. Yeah, absolutely. You see that, that one thicker tree kind of about 100 feet from the basket. You can kind of see it there illuminated and Really, that's the tree you just want to miss left, almost turning into that gap. Garrett's going to show you exactly what that looks like. Oh, yeah, miss that tree. And he gets a, a nice tree hit at the very end just to keep him nice and close to the basket. Yeah, after an ace run, actually. Mm -hmm. A little bit too early of turn there. This could filter, ah, catches one of those trees on the right side. That's kind of what happens when you turn it a little bit too early on this hole. And right before I threw this shot, I looked at the T sign and it said that 443 footage. So, and I was just trying to find, follow Garrett's line with my Mako 3. And threw it exactly how I wanted, perfectly turning through this gap. Kind of. Yeah. 
it just, okay, it doesn't really hit anything. It's gonna leave me about 60 feet or so behind the basket. Definitely a hole that's a little more confusing than it appears in front of you. Yeah, the ground play definitely is hard to judge because sometimes you could catch a rock or a root and stick, and then other times you could slide the 50 or 60 feet like yours did. Mm -hmm. See Josh stalls out a little bit early. Gonna be left side, but that is still putting. Oh, and Jason has a little bit of a gap here, actually. Gives a nice jump putt to easy tap in for par. Josh, let's see if he can give this one a nice run. Gets it up. Oh! And we thought that was in from back where we were standing. Really nice run there from him. And you have to go with a pretty steep hyzer putt. Yeah, and it hit a tree coming into the basket and kicked itself a little bit right, but it's close enough. Oh, and Ooh. Garrett barely squeaking it in. Yeah, that's a good birdie to get on this hole. Can't imagine too, too many people getting it being so tricky by the green. Good putt from you, and like you said, there were only three players to get this birdie today. Garrett Gerthy, Chris Clemens, and Josh DiBattista. Those are great birdies to get. Here we are on hole eight. I believe it's the shortest hole in the course, coming in at 185 feet. Uh, short little par three. This gap that the drone is flying through now is really all you want to hit with a turning shot on a backhand, right-hand shot. And this hill can kind of just usually catch your shots pretty well. If you do happen to catch it on an angle, it could roll down to about 30, 35 feet, but it's a, a nice backstop to almost give you an ace run. Oh, and Garrett gives it a perfect ace run and yeah. then gets that little bit of slide back to the basket. Yeah, that was a perfect shot there. And Jason going for this hyzer gap. And he's released it a bit early, knew it out of his hand. But that'll leave him with a pretty easy approach up there for par. Couldn't quite get the turn on that P2, but I'm gonna be about 40, 40 ish feet right of the basket. See Josh also electing for that hyzer line. Getting lucky through some of the trees and then he filters down the bottom of the hill. It's probably one of the longest edge of circle putts you can have. Mm -hmm. oh. He gave that a great run, picking the chains on the right side. Here's you with another tricky putt. Seems like yeah. you haven't really had any easy ones today. Oh, no. <sighs> that was a really tricky putt. I had to opt to the straddle stance there just because that right side of the basket was kind of covered, but I didn't yeah. start it enough left to give it Anheuser. So on. You guys are range finding yeah. to see if he is outside the circle. Yeah, he was wondering if he could jump putt it. So I brought out the Bushnell range finder and marked it at 31 feet, which was exactly Garrett's guess. Wow. Just a little bit right side. Yeah, that's a tricky putt. To give it as much power, you usually can pull it to that right side a bit. Here I am from a very similar distance. Oh my gosh. That looked to be a great putt, just a little bit left side. Yeah, a little bit of cut through throughout left side chains, but that can be expected some of the times, not getting it in the center of the basket. Good birdie from Garrett. Unfortunate bogey for you. Moving into hole number 10, or hole number nine, excuse me. This is a 600 foot par four. And this is just a beautiful grass fairway the whole entire way. Most players are gonna be shaping a slightly left to right moving backhand, trying to get somewhere near this tee, but 
the farther up the fairway you are, the easier this approach is. And this is definitely one that is doable. A lot of people are getting looks at this in practice if you choose to go with the distance driver off the tee. Garrett. He's Looks going to for this. have one, yeah. Yeah, he's going with his bomber wraith, starting it at that left side and turning it right. Well, that needs to break left. Just a little bit too hard of a turn on that one. Yeah, and that he was... gets at a fortunate kick, but still in the fairway on that left side, which might be a bit trickier. So close. This needs this. to find some turn. Yes. Oh, wow. This is the shot you want here. Oh, wow. Skipping it down and actually getting oh my somewhat gosh. of a friendly, unfriendly roll. <laughs> that, that left side of the fairway is pretty tricky as you see all these little trees, and then there's also a bit of a creek in there that's not OB casual, but a bit tricky of a line yeah. to navigate through. You see Josh just a little bit nose up. Didn't quite drive through the shot all the way. Drop down close to the fairway. You do have a destroyer in your hand. One full rip here. Starting on that left side, getting that lip. Needs to stay up. And you look to be right next to Ten's tee box. Yep. Yeah, just got a little bit of an anti-skip off that hillside and I'm going to be probably about 150 feet away from the basket. Oh, and that shot looked great. Oh, and he's found a similar spot that Jason did off the tee down on that left side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of shots filter there if you don't throw it low into the hillside or throw maybe a sidearm approach. Garrett thought this was perfect, but just under that hillside, just gets floaty and just filters down to that left. He was pretty surprised that it didn't hit any of those small trees. Yeah, this one is a lot more downhill at the very end than you think. Mm -hmm. It, Like you said, a lot of shots do filter to that side. You look to be just trying to put a Mako up to the basket. Yeah. Caught a tree. Have a longer putt than you wanted, probably. Yeah. Honestly, I was just happy to hit the initial gap. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> And this is for Eagle. And he does have a gap here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to get the height. Yeah. Yep. Just catches that tree. Looked to be on a decent line, but it's really tricky from down in this rough here. Ooh. She's getting a probably good break there to stay on that upper level. This is you putting straight down the hill. Oh, <laughs> that really tried to spit through again. I know. I was like, don't you dare do it twice in a row. That was a great committed putt, though, to finish out your front nine. Garrett with a par. Has a three-stroke lead currently over yourself. And that's what the big bombing drive gets you, just a really routine up and down for birdie. Yeah, and after a little bit of a slow start, he's back pretty good under par, tied with you at 10 under, and Joshua at also 10 under. Thank you guys for tuning into the front nine of the round two at the Main State Championships. Here's the leaderboard check-in. Garrett at 13 under, Jason, Josh, and yourself all at 10 under. And myself, I was also at 10 under, the pretty good front nine. Simon, Tyler Grady, Chris Clemens, and Terry all making moves currently. We'll see you guys in the back nine. Thank you for tuning into the front.